In 2019, an advert appeared on a 4x4 forum telling of two Sherman tanks that were about to be scrapped in southwest Africa. The tanks were in the Namibian mining town of Oranumund, at a closed-down mining club on the outskirts of the town. It turned out that the tanks belonged to the De Beers Diamond Mining Company and could not be moved or purchased. In fact, the town had three Sherman tanks in total, a third one in a kids' play area in Oranumund, called the Tank Park. All the Shermans are M4A2 models, and were shipped probably from Italy or the Middle East to South Africa and trucked up to Namibia by road. These photos show the tanks leaving South Africa being delivered to the De Beer diamond mines in Namibia in 1948. Once at the De Beers workshops the tanks had major modifications, including an electric motor conversion. My job was to refit the tanks with electrics so that they could be turned into stackers for the bucket excavators. First the tank had to be stripped of its gear. For the sparkies, refitting the tanks consisted of installing a 60-horse squirrel cage motor and switch gear, and a small solenoid-operated hydraulic brake system that attached on the drive shaft, with two levers at the back of the tank so it could be steered, plus emergency stops on both sides. The very effective braking unit operated on the dead man system, if the operator's hand was removed from the controls the tank stopped. It was virtually idiot proof and I never recall even the most raw recruit ever making a mistake with that system. While all that was going on the fitters mounted a swiveling conveyor belt stacking system on top. The hole was designed in-house, creating a very economical way of equipping the mines in the post-war years when imported machinery was impossible to access. There must be dozens of them still lying around in the desert, particularly in G area. These tanks were still in use as stackers when I left in 67 so they must have been scrapped later than that. The De Beer company used the Sherman bodies as platforms to mount various equipment. One of the applications that was used was similar to a giant vacuum cleaner. It was used to remove the sand from the top of the bedrock, where the diamonds are more likely to be found. Others were converted to mobile conveyor belt stackers, with turntables fitted to the turret ring so it could be positioned in any direction. But in the end, modern more efficient machinery made the Shermans obsolete, and many were moved to the De Beer scrap yards. Uh, okay, I came to CDM in 1970, and when I came into CDM in 1970, the Shermans were not used anymore in the mine. Uh, some of them came to town and they were parked all over the town in the parks, etc. Some of them were given to the moths, etc. Uh, and what happened to the other ones, I don't know, they might have ended up in the Oopfly scrapyard. For several decades, this area has been fenced off to protect the diamond resources. Everything that went inside the mine stayed in the mine and, as a consequence, scrap accumulated over the years. In March 2008, Namdeb Diamond Corporation and SA Metal Namibia entered into an agreement to clear the mining area of all scrap metal built up over the past 80 years. To date, in excess of 132,000 tons of scrap metal have been dispatched. After talking to SA Metal Namibia, they said to us when removing the scrap at no point did they see or scrap any tanks. So what happened to the other Shermans? After speaking to some of the people that worked at the mines, it is believed that the tanks and some of the other heavy machinery was used as a breakwater barrier to allow the company to mine further out to sea. So, the other Shermans are now probably buried well below the sand, we don't know how many Shermans are out there, but we do know, the three in the town are the last survivors of the De Beer tank fleet. Two of the electric Shermans still stand on display outside the now-closed Moths Miners Club. The tanks stand as a monument to the men that once operated them, and as a reminder of the days when the machinery was worked and used to harvest the local diamonds. As the mining area is so close to the sea, the Shermans have suffered heavy corrosion. This unfortunately made it impossible to get the hull ID numbers or year of manufacture. The sharp box-like angles of the driver's hoods, 
as seen here, were an exclusive feature of M4A2s manufactured by the Fisher Body Division of General Motors, from late 1942 through to late 1943. Top. There's the inside. One other Sherman was placed in a kid's play park and was recently repainted in bright colors by the local authorities. This quite rare M4A2 was probably made by Federal Machine and Welder and originally fitted with the twin GM diesel engine. This sign tells of a tale of one of the mine workers driving his tank into town to enjoy an ice cold beer after work. On one side of the tank, the De Beer workshops have fitted a new track. From manufacturer's numbers we can tell this track was made in 1953, and so the De Beer company must have still been ordering parts until at least the mid-1950s. Okay, so this is inside the tank number three at the tank park. It's a bit more empty than the others. There's the back.
We hope you enjoyed exploring these tanks with us. If you want to see more lost or hidden tank stories, check out our other videos.